Hi there, this is Python trainer Ruven Lerner here with another video answering a question from one of the subscribers to my Better Developers list. And this question comes from Sam, who's a student. And he says, I'm currently taking a data structures course in Java. Before I started CS classes in Java, I was taking Python classes. So I'm more comfortable with Python. Already good intro, Sam. And he says, in Python, we use lists and tuples frequently, but I've never really used an array in Python. In Java, however, we use arrays frequently, and I've never used a list or a tuple. Do you know why that is? What is the difference between a list and an array? Are they really just the same thing? And the answer is, of course, yes and no. They are very, very similar, and different languages will typically use those names in sort of squishy ways. But I want to try to make it a little clearer. And this is actually a topic I wanted to discuss anyway, so I'm really glad that Sam asked about it. So let's start off with the fact that in Python, we use lists all the time. I'm going to say your my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? And the type of my list is going to be list. Notice, we don't have to say what type of data is being stored in my list. It's just a list. So in Python, because it's a dynamic language, a list can contain any items of any types, and we can mix them up if we want. But, but the convention in Python is not to mix it up. The convention is in Python is for a list to contain elements of the same type. So a list of integers, a list of floats, a list of strings, a list of lists, a list of tuples, a list of dicts, list of objects. You can do all sorts of things, a list of modules, a list of functions. It goes on, on, and on ad infinitum. So we traditionally use lists for sequences of the same type. If I want to have a sequence of different types, then I'll typically use a tuple. Now those are the conventions. As I like to say, the Python police are not going to come and arrest you if you have lists containing different types of things or tuples containing the same types of things. But it's a common mistake to think that lists are mutable and tuples are immutable and that's the main difference between them. There might be a technical difference, but the conventional difference, of course, is as I said, lists are for sequences of the same type and tuples are for different types. Now, that doesn't necessarily explain the difference between arrays and lists, because if you look at a language like JavaScript or like Ruby or even like Perl, in those languages, they have things that work just like or almost like Python lists, and yet they are called arrays. So is it just a semantic difference? Well, it could be. If you're talking about those languages in which they talk about arrays and we talk about lists in Python, yeah, it's basically a semantic difference. But Python has arrays also, there's different types of arrays, and there are actually differences, at least at the technical theoretic level, between arrays and lists. And you can basically boil it down to two things. So arrays, basically, let's even make this in Markdown. All right, make it a little fancier. So we'll say, first of all, all items are of the same type, and the size of the array is known or is set when we create the array. Now notice, this doesn't mean that an array then is immutable, not at all, but it means that it's going to contain only one type and it's going to be enforced. It's not just going to be a nice convention like we have in Python for lists. And the size is going to be set at creation time. Now, neither of these is true about lists in Python. I can start with my list equals 10, 20, 30. I can say my list append a, and look at that. Now I violated both rules in one fell swoop. We have now modified the size of our list, and we've added an item that's not of the same type. So these are the two basic rules that I've found over the years are true for arrays and not true for lists, and that's why it's not good to talk about Python lists as arrays. But it's really common for people to do that because we use them for similar things. Right? If you're coming from a language like Java and you want to have a bunch of IP addresses, a bunch of usernames, a bunch of anythings, what are you going to use? Right, you're going to use an array. Now, in such a language, and it's been a long time since I used Java, so I might be making a mistake here, uh, in general, in Java, if I remember correctly, you have to say it's going to be an array of what? An array of integer, an array of string, an array of arrays. Whereas in Python, as we see, we don't have to do that at all. Um, and I, I remember actually many, many years ago when I was working uh, at my first job and we were using C and C++ and someone said, hey, C++ is this new thing uh, where you can have uh, like templated arrays. So you can have an array of this, an array of that. I was thinking, that's kind of weird. At the time, I was using a lot of Perl and Python and I was thinking in, in both languages, you just sort of declare a list or an array and you don't have to worry about the types. So these are the sorts of things that people who deal with statically compiled languages typically worry about. Does this mean, though, that Python lacks any arrays? No, not at all. First of all, Python lists behind the scenes 
are actually implemented as arrays, arrays of pointers or as arrays of pointers to pi objects. So basically the reason that a Python list can contain any type of object is because every object in Python is implemented at the C level as what's called a pi object or a pointer to pi object. And so as far as Python is concerned, it just has four different pointers to pi object here. Um, now it's an array though behind the scenes. So does this mean that when I add something to my list that the array is actually growing? Does that violate my rule? No, actually, Python behind the scenes allocates a bunch of space for these pi object pointers. Um, and so as you add items to your uh, list, it might need to then create a new array of pointers that'll be bigger, but it actually allocates more memory than it needs on the assumption that you'll be appending. So if you actually trace the amount of memory that a Python list uses when you're adding items to it, you'll find that it jumps and jumps and jumps. And so each time it jumps, it's basically because Python is allocating a new array of pointers and it's keeping some spare padding in there so that if you want to add, if you want to append to it, then it won't be a problem. But there are actually arrays in Python. And I want to point this to you just very, very briefly. So there is actually an array module. I can say import array. It's in the standard library, but it's not a built-in, so you have to actually import it. I can then say a equals an array. Of what, though? Well, here's where things get kind of interesting. If I say help on array, this is a module that implements the array class. And what you can do is you can say, I want to have an array of, and you set a type code for it. So I can say here, a equals an array of, and let's say here, I'm going to do capital I. That means it's going to be unsigned integers. Okay, so now what? Oh, sorry, array.array. .array. That'll help. Now what? Now I can say, what's A? And it's going to say, well, it's an array of unsigned integers. And it uses that I code. In fact, if I say array.typecodes, you'll see if this lists all the different type codes that you can use. So I can actually now say A.append of 100 and A.append of 1,000. And if I now look at A, it'll show me that it's an array with two elements here, 100 and 1,000, and they are of type unsigned int. So far, so good. Now you might be saying, wait a second, didn't I tell you before that you can't change the size of an array? And didn't I just change it? Like len of a is now going to be two. And if I say a.append of 2,000, now I do a len of a and it's going to be three. So to be honest, I don't know what's going on here. I'm not sure if this is a misuse of the term array or if it's just reallocating things behind the scenes so that we don't have to know or worry about how much space is actually being used. But it's clearly changing the length. However, the second rule, the rule of, or maybe it was the first rule, that all the elements are of the same type, this is definitely true. If I say a.append of q, it'll say, hey, you can't do that. An integer is required, and I got type string. Well, if I say a.append of minus 5, it's going to say, you can't do that, because I'm only accepting uh, unsigned ints, and you can't turn this negative value into an unsigned int. Now, arrays, when are they actually used? I can't find a really good use case for them. I've been reading through some documentation, blog posts, and articles about them. Everyone's like, oh, this is how it works, and it's a very light wrapper around a C array. And that's basically the only use case I can think of, that if you know you're going to have a lot of signed-ins, unsigned-ins, very small, you, you want to keep it as small as possible, you're worried about memory, then you might, just might, want to use these sorts of Python arrays because they'll be a little tighter and smaller than Python lists. Because remember, a list is always pointing to an object and the objects are going to be big, whereas these can be quite small if you really want. But nowadays, quite frankly, if I'm thinking of using an array, I'm not thinking about using these Python arrays at all. Rather, I'm going to think about using a NumPy array, and then I have to say import NumPy as NP. And then I can create an array there. I can say A equals NP array of, it's called 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now, NumPy arrays are arrays. This is a very, very, very thin wrapper around C arrays, and every array has a D type has a type of value that is in there. Here it's 64-bit ints. What if I know that I'm going to have very small numbers? Then I can set to have a different d-type. I can say here d-type equals np int, let's call it 8. And that will have 8-bit numbers instead. And so it's going to consume much less memory. So if I had to use an array today, and actually I do this all the time, I would use NumPy arrays. Or if you really want to get some extra functionality, use Pandas, which is a really amazing wrapper around NumPy arrays. But NumPy arrays, they are fixed in size. You cannot change their sizes at all, at all, at all. You, they must have the same type in there. So if I say A uh, of, let's call this 2, equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that worked just great, right? 
Well, sort of. It chopped off our floating point number and made it just an int. And if I say a of 2, a of 2 equals, you know, abc, then it's going to throw a gasket, right? Because it's going to say, wait a second, I can't even turn this into an int trying to run int on it. It's just not going to work. And what happens, by the way, if I say a of 2 equals 99999? Well, <laughs> it's going to give me minus 97. Why? Because I said that it should be 8-bit integers, and 99999 is too big for 8 bits. So it's not going to complain. It's not going to throw an error. It's just going to give me this weirdo number that's the result of wrapping around. So you do have to be careful here. The other thing is that remember that NumPy arrays work vectorally. So if I say a plus 3, that's going to add 3 to each of these. And so it's going to apply the operator to each of the elements there using what's known as broadcasting. So bottom line. Lists are basically the Python equivalent to arrays in Java or any other sorts of languages. You're going to use them in very similar sorts of circumstances, but they're more flexible and more dynamic. There is an array module that you can use, but I think it's not deprecated, but it's a little weird, and it's only going to be in certain particular kinds of use cases. Much more popular, extraordinarily popular NumPy arrays, which I think do fit the bill for official array uh, sort of uh, definitions, but they have their own syntax and they have their own behavior that you should worry about. Okay, I hope this answered Sam's question, and if any of you are interested in learning more about Python, every week I have my Better Developers list comes out. You can subscribe at betterdevelopersweekly.com. And if you have any questions for me, hit me up on Twitter or on email, and I would be delighted to answer any questions you have. I'll be back soon with more videos answering Python questions, and until then, all the best.